With nine marriages and countless scandals under her belt, Zsa Zsa Gabor was one of Hollywood's most controversial starlets, but when she released her memoir, no one was prepared for her most chilling revelation, which is coming up. Zsa Zsa Gabor wore Hollywood like a skin-tight dress, languishing in its glamour, its galas, and its dark side. Through her incredible nine marriages, she discovered and aired some of the dirtiest laundry in Tinseltown, and she certainly had a few secrets of her own. Zsa Zsa actually came from a family of drop-dead beauties. Born in Hungary as Sari Gabor, her sisters were the future socialite Magda and fellow actress Eva Gabor. But although her siblings earned a ton of notoriety for their own scandalous love lives, it's their middle sister Zsa, Zsa who has become synonymous with Hollywood infamy and for good reason. When Zsa, Zsa was 17 years old, her entire life changed in the blink of an eye. According to Gabor, she was walking the streets of Vienna, Austria on a vacation when the opera singer Richard Tauber spotted her from across the road. Tauber, who dabbled in film roles, knew a superstar when he saw one and invited her to join him on stage for a show. It was the beginning of her fame and Zsa, Zsa knew exactly what to do. Within the year, Zsa, Zsa's name was on everybody's lips. She won the Miss Hungary competition in 1936 when she was still a teenager, and she then took it up a notch. In 1937, just barely out of her teen years, she married the Turkish politician Burhan Asaf Belgi, feeling that his prestige matched her ambitions. Yet like so many youthful decisions, this was a mistake. Even this early on, Gabor was developing her most infamous habit. She hated staying put, and she especially hated staying put with one man. By the early 1940s, Zsa Zsa's first marriage was over. On the rebound, she and her sisters thought it was high time to leave Hungary behind for the United States. The Gabors packed up their trunks and suddenly started popping up in parties from New York to Hollywood, and boy, did they make an impression. By this time, Zsa, Zsa had developed from a cultish, promising girl into an unforgettable bombshell. She had a glass-cut jaw, full lips, and dark, intelligent eyes. Unfortunately for Zsa, Zsa she was about to meet a man who would make her new life in America very difficult. Gabor was just out of her first marriage, but seemingly none the wiser when it came to her love life. When she met and started courting the hotel magnate Conrad Hilton, yes, that Hilton, she didn't seem to care that he was three decades older than her or that he had a cutthroat reputation around town. No, Gabor only cared that he had money and lots of it. So she ignored some huge red flags. For one, although Hilton was a very rich man, he was also a damaged one. In his first marriage, he had been a devout Catholic, raising three young boys. But then his wife left him for a football coach, sending him into a destructive spiral that threw him into Zsa Zsa's world of nightclubs and loose morals. When Gabor first met Hilton, Conrad might have been in lust with the voluptuous starlet but he also had his suspicions about her interest in his money. In response, he came up with a now notorious test. He took it upon himself one night to present his prospective bride with two jewelry boxes. In one box was a gaudy, absolutely massive ring fit for a queen. In the other, however, a smaller yet more tasteful piece of jewelry. Looking at them, Gabor made a split-second choice. Instead of reaching for the ring she really wanted, she picked the smaller one she knew Hilton was hoping she would go for. With this test passed, Hilton went forward with the courtship of the socialite for better or, as it happened, for worse. 
In 1942, Gabor and Hilton married, and the budding socialite must have thought she'd struck gold when he put the wedding ring on her hand. She couldn't have been more wrong. The Conrad Hilton, who had so lavishly courted her, was actually nothing more than a miser in his personal life, which certainly wasn't what she signed up for, and as time went on, the cracks grew deeper. Hilton wasn't just cheap. He was also cold and cruel. Quickly annoyed with Gabor's taste for the finer things in life, Hilton kept her on a meager budget and tracked all her spending. More than that, he forced her to sleep in a separate room from him and he was about to insult her where it really hurt. While married to Gabor, Hilton changed her name to Georgia, claiming he couldn't and wouldn't pronounce her Hungarian first name. Zsa later commented that this move symbolized everything my marriage to him would eventually become. My Hungarian roots were to be ripped out and my background ignored. But just when she thought it couldn't get worse, it did. According to Hilton himself, the killing blow in his marriage to Gabor happened one day in 1946, when he and Zsa were staying at his hotel, the Plaza. That day, Conrad was sick with the flu, and he made Gabor stay with him and be his nursemaid. As a result, the unhappy couple was stuck in their admittedly fancy sweets for the day. This did not end well. Gabor wanted to look her best for her husband. Accordingly, she changed every couple of hours for breakfast, then lunch, then tea time, and finally dinner. Her husband's response was chilling. Instead of appreciating this, Hilton was apoplectic at her gaudy show. In the end, it was Hilton who initiated the split from Gabor, citing this seemingly innocent fashion parade as part of his grounds for divorce. He also screwed her right over, refusing to give her nearly anything in the settlement and barely anything in the way of alimony but she was about to throw a curveball of her own. Throughout the entire court proceedings of her divorce, Zsa was hiding an enormous secret. She was actually pregnant with Conrad Hilton's child, a daughter she had in March 1947 and named Francesca. In the end, Gabor raised Francesca entirely on her own, not even asking for child support. Yet, as we'll see, Gabor was hiding more disturbing secrets about her marriage to Hilton, which she would reveal on her own terms. Although Gabor didn't ask for child support, she did use Francesca as a pawn in other more cruel ways. Gabor kept the girl with her on the set of films and in a series of hotels, but if she ever needed to contact Conrad for anything, she would dangle Francesca in front of him as an excuse to keep the communications open, often dropping into his life for surprise visits long after their split. After Gabor finally got free of Conrad Hilton, she threw herself back into the fire, taking up with the actor George Sanders, a distinguished upper-class Brit known for playing well-bred villains. His flame with Zsa however, was anything but sophisticated. Although he had been married for nearly a decade to another woman, in 1949 he pushed through a divorce and married Gabor instead. The third time supposed to be the charm, but Zsa had no such luck. To be fair, she started off her nuptials to Sanders with a bang. Although she'd already starred in Hollywood productions before, she now dipped her feet into acting and got work in films like Moulin Rouge within just a few short months. The closer she got to the spotlight, the further she got from George Sanders. Even though Zsa, Zsa didn't often star in films and generally just traded on her glamorous personality, things could have been much different. Gabor was one of the final choices to play the role of Miss Caswell in the 1950 classic All About Eve. But she lost out to Marilyn Monroe for the part. If you have to lose to someone, I guess it doesn't hurt to lose to Marilyn Monroe. In 1949, producers offered her the chance to star in the film adaptation of the book Lady Chatterley's Lover. 
a novel infamous for several steamy and very explicit intimate scenes. Despite her obvious experience with men and her scandalous persona, Gabor refused to court controversy this one time and turned the role down. In 1962, Jaja married a man named Herbert Hutner, and while wedding bells were a familiar sound to the actress, Hutner was unusual in one way. Namely, he was normal. A private investment banker, he still had healthy coffers, of course, but otherwise led a quiet life. For the first time in her life, Gabor was happy, which meant it had to end horribly. We always let the good ones go, but that goes double for Zsa Gabor. She and Hutner called it quits by 1966, and looking back on her fourth, yes, fourth marriage, Gabor admitted that Hutner's kindness and generosity towards her almost annihilated her drive to succeed. In the end, Jaja traded in the quiet life for the excitement she so craved. Gabor was famous for her razor-sharp wit, penchant for one-liners, and self-deprecating humor. On one occasion, when talking about her notorious love life, she quipped, A girl must marry for love and keep on marrying until she finds it. In a reference to her many divorces, she later joked, I am a marvelous housekeeper. Every time I leave a man, I keep his house. In 1970, still wanting the best of what money could buy, Gabor bought a vast Bel Air mansion done in the classic Hollywood Regency style. However, this was no run-of-the-mill mansion. Howard Hughes had originally constructed the building, and none other than Elvis Presley once lived in it. In short, it was a palace fit for Hollywood legends. Say what you will about Gabor's career or her romantic life, but she was an extremely formidable woman. In fact, she had an amazing gift for languages. Aside from her native Hungarian tongue, Gabor also spoke English, Italian, German, and French. Of course, these skills are very useful when whining and dining with handsome rich European men. The next years of Gabor's life were a blur of failed marriages. By 1986, she tied the knot a whopping four more times, bringing her husband total up to eight. Most of the unions didn't even last two years. Her marriage to character actor Felipe de Alba, however, lasted just one day. The regretful couple annulled it immediately after signing the papers. Somehow, though, Gabor still had one last scandalous marriage on the horizon. In the mid-80s, Gabor married Frederick, Prince von Anhalt, who started out the decade as a regular German businessman named Hans Lichtenberg, but he managed to become a prince in a very weird way. In 1980, Princess Marie Auguste of Anhalt adopted Frederick when he was a ripe 36 years old, likely for some kind of monetary gain. If this guy sounds shady, that's because he was. Zsa's daughter Francesca was immediately on guard about Frederick, and it only got worse as Gabor's marriage went on. Soon Francesca accused the prince of intentionally limiting her time with her mother and isolating her in general from her other friends. During Gabor's marriage to Frederick, the actress gave a series of incredibly bizarre statements. When she was 94, she even claimed that she wanted to have another child and wanted a surrogate to carry the baby. Gabor's relationship with her daughter Francesca Hilton was rocky at the best of times, but it went from fragile to horrific. In 2005, Frederick sued Francesca, claiming that she was trying to defraud her mother. There was just one problem. When Frederick brought the papers to Gabor to sign, she refused to sue her own daughter and the courts kicked the suit out. Like many old Hollywood celebrities, Gabor got into some scandalous feuds, but her spat with starlet Elka Sommer was downright disastrous. The feud began after the two women appeared on the annual television special Circus of the Stars. 
Reportedly, Summer made comments about Gabor's weight. When Summer watched Gabor mount a horse, she muttered, Poor horse! But that was just the warning shot. As time went on, the feud got more and more bitter. Eventually, Gabor and her husband Friedrich gave a shocking interview. In it, they insulted Summer for looking like a balding 100-year-old grandmother. Gabor also added that the actress was so poor she had to sell her house in Hollywood and now lives in the worst part of Los Angeles. Eventually, the feud and this series of colorful comments landed Gabor and Summer in libel court. Gabor's rival won, and the court awarded Summer a nice $3.3 million in damages. Upon hearing the verdict, Gabor immediately announced her intent to appeal, stating bitterly, I'd rather see her starve to death than give her one single dollar. Ouch. In 1989, officer Paul Kramer pulled Gabor over while she was driving a Rolls Royce in Beverly Hills. Not only was she driving without a license, but there was also an open alcohol container in the car. Instead of admitting any culpability, Gabor slapped Kramer in the face and drove away from the traffic stop. No amount of charm or Hollywood pedigree could get Gabor out of this one, especially when law enforcement and the press got a hold of what she'd done. Three months later, a judge convicted Gabor of slapping Kramer. She had to pay a hefty fine and serve three days in jail for her bad behavior. That's right, a 72-year-old Gabor was taken away to the slammer. In 1991, Gabor released her autobiography, One Lifetime is Not Enough. As you might imagine, some of the claims in the book are incredibly scandalous. But one is the most traumatic revelation of all. In one chapter, Gabor confessed that she conceived her only daughter, Francesca, after Conrad Hilton forced himself on her during their marriage. In the same memoir, Gabor also claimed that while married to Hilton, she had an affair with his eldest son, Nikki, who was not only her stepson at the time, but was also nearly a decade younger than her. Tragically, Gabor actually outlived her only child. Francesca died on January 5th, 2015 at the age of 67 after suffering a massive stroke. Even sadder, at this point, Francesca Hilton had been living out of her car, having received almost nothing in her inheritance after her millionaire father, Conrad Hilton, died. Incredibly, Gabor's ninth and final husband, Friedrich Prince von Anhalt, didn't tell Zsa about her daughter Francesca's death. He claimed that by this point, Gabor was in such a fragile physical and mental state he feared the knowledge would destroy her. She never did find out the truth. When the time came, Gabor died never knowing that her daughter had also passed. On December 18, 2016, the ailing Zsa Gabor passed from cardiac arrest. Only that's not the whole story. The press reported her passing in mournful tones, but very few people knew the truth. Gabor was in a coma and on life support for a full five years before passing just 50 days away from her 100th birthday. Still, once she did go, she went in style. Although Van Anhelt buried Gabor's ashes shortly after she passed in a Los Angeles cemetery, this wasn't her final resting place. Gabor always said she wanted to go back to Hungary to live out her final days, but she never got a chance to do it. So, five years later, in the summer of 2021, Van Anhelt paid tribute to Gabor in the most Zsa way possible. He bought a first-class seat for Gabor's ashes and flew them to Budapest. Only a first-class seat wasn't enough. As Van Anhelt said, she was in first class, she had her own seat and she had her passport, everything was there. It was her last trip. She even had her champagne and caviar. Zsa Gabor enjoyed the finer things in life and never played by anyone else's rules, not even after passing away. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for more fascinating content.